cabinet should be equity in the world. <laughs> Now then crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel and yes, finally back on the tools. Now I tend to make videos as things come into the workshop as opposed to specifically plan ahead and, and you know make videos that are not real jobs that come in. Now recently uh, one of my friends gave me this. Now this is a worn they call it a contactor set, the worn. It's actually just a solenoid pack. If you're English, we'd call this a solenoid pack. And we've got the, uh, the trigger circuit terminals here. These are the low current flow terminals. And each one of these labeled up with a particular color. And then here, we've got the, the load side of the solenoid, where we've got, again, four terminals and four respective colors. So this one here will be black. This is blue. That one is red and this one is yellow. Now, without a particular wiring diagram, you don't quite know how this would be wired up, other than the fact that this is the trigger side of the circuit and these will be the load side. And it's a dead giveaway because they're the larger terminals, aren't they? Now, I've seen a huge increase over, over recent years on the number of winches fitted to ATVs and ROVs, that's the side-by-sides that are out there. Uh, now, my background is four-wheel drive winches, um, you know, again, worn, super winch, that kind of stuff. And whenever we install the winch onto a four-wheel drive, we would always install what we call a battery isolation switch. So the main feed, the heavy cable that goes to the solenoid block, would have a big high current switch in it. So if, if at any time the solenoid pack failed and when the winch isn't in use, we can de-energize that circuit. So there's no power being fed to the winch or to the solenoid pack. It's basically, to all intents and purposes, dead. Now this has a, a main benefit because it reduces the green crusties. Uh, unfortunately, pretty much all solenoid packs are not fully waterproof. And we're going to be pulling this one apart a bit later on to see uh, what problems the you know moisture has caused to this, because this doesn't work properly. And we're going to diagnose the fault with it. Um, by turning off the power, it basically stops those green crusties from growing and developing when the winch isn't in use, which is most of the time, let's face it. Sometimes winches can lie dormant for months and months and months, and then one day you get stuck, and you want to use it and then you realize it doesn't work and then you're walking home bit of a problem isn't it so we would always fit a battery battery isolation switch because sometimes these uh, the buzz bar inside can also fuse into position it can actually sort of weld itself to the contacts so when you let go of the switch on the controller or the switch on the handlebars the winch just keeps going and then what are you going to do all you can do without an isolation switch is try and disconnect the battery of the bike. Turning the ignition key off will make no difference. The winch will just continue to spool in or spool out, usually spool in under heavy load. And then it runs out of cable and the motor burns out and then you've got a very expensive repair. When all in, basically all that happened is your solenoid pack failed and now it's cost you a whole winch. So if you're ever gonna install a winch, I would strongly recommend that you fit a battery isolation switch as well. And to my surprise, it doesn't come in a normal worn kit anymore, especially for ATVs and ROVs. So a bit of a concern. The other problem is that it, it might, it has the potential to just start working when the vehicle's parked up in the garage. Now, of course, you've got the winch cable hooked onto the bike somewhere, so the motor's going to stall, current flow is going to go through the roof, lots of heat buildup. It could potentially cause a fire. Now that's very serious because it could burn your whole garage down, not just the quad bike that it's attached to. So again, battery isolation switch, really, really good idea. Now, more to the point, let's get round to testing this. So first of all, I'm going to draw you a circuit diagram of how this thing's wired up. And then we can test it. Here we go. 
Right, so first of all, we've got four heavy terminals. We've got just approximately, they're a bit like that, aren't they? And for clarification, this one is the black. This one is the blue. This one is yellow. And this one is red. Right, very quickly, this is battery negative. This is battery positive. And these two go to the winch motor. Now, with the relay, basically when you spool in and spool out, all it does is flip the polarity between those two terminals. So we can't label one up as positive or negative because they do change. Now, also down here, we've got the three uh, trigger circuit terminals here. We've got one, two, three. This one is green. Well, it's labeled green on the relay. This one is brown. And this one is black. Now, the middle one is common. So for the wiring purposes, it could be positive, it could be negative, it doesn't matter. And then we just apply the opposite. So if that was negative, for example, we, if we apply the positive side of the circuit to here, the 12 volts positive, battery positive, then it will energize the winding uh, to cause that part of the solenoid to trigger. If we, on, on the other hand, turn the switch to the, say for example, spool out, then it will um, you know, trigger the winding or provide current flow through this particular winding by putting positive on this terminal. So between those we have windings and we'll see those a bit later on in the video when we take this thing apart. So for one, we they connect this one to battery negative and then they, they provide a plus 12 volts here or the plus 12 volts here, not obviously both at the same time because then the relay would cause, well, it wouldn't know what to do, would it? It would probably cause a short circuit. So we've got battery negative going on to the brown, and then when we want the relay, to, for example, the winch to spool in, I don't know which way around it is, whether it's in when we provide positive to here or whether it's spool in when positive goes on the green. I actually don't know. I don't have the whole winch to hand. I don't have the winch motor. I've just got the relay. So the next step is we're going to wire this up on the bench using a power supply, a 12 volt power supply, and we're gonna see what the problem is. Why isn't it working? First of all, let's see what the fail is uh, as regards the custom complaint. I don't remember whether the customer said the winch spooled in or didn't spool out. Um, you know, I just don't know. So we're gonna find out. Right, let's get it slapped in the vise. Make sure it's all in focus for you. That should work. Okay, right, let's get it wired up. So we've got our First of all, power supply. So we're going to connect the uh, the battery positive. Now I'm just using a small power supply for this onto that terminal. Now this this one is marked with the red dot, and this one is marked by the black dot. So that's battery positive, battery negative. Dead easy. And uh, next job is we need some more leads. Okay, now if you remember, we said on the diagram that this central terminal here, which is part of the trigger circuit, the brown terminal, needs also to be connected to battery negative. So we can do that. We can just steal that from the side here. If we can get in. Hang on a minute. There we go. We'll do that. Nice, good connection. And then we'll connect that one onto that. It's always a lot harder doing things to camera, isn't it? There we are. Right, now, these two are going to be supplied, at different times, battery positive. So we can do that. We can steal the battery positive from here. Keeps it nice and easy. And then, well, we can just quickly check, can't we? We can go clickety-click-click. We can put a positive supply on this side. This is the green terminal. And just see if it moves, see if it makes a noise. Ah, let's turn the power supply on. That would help, wouldn't it? Let's give it a go. Cool. Well, that's telling us that the relay is actually moving. The armature inside is moving and the buzz bar is making contact. 
whether it's actually flowing current or not, we don't know yet. This side, ah, very different. Okay, so that going back to this one again, sounds good, not so good. Now, in either case, whether we've got 12 volts on here or 12 volts on here, depending on whether the winch has been spooled in or spooled out, we should get 12 volts across these two heavy terminals here. So if we get a bulb, and we'll just wire up a bulb across these two. That's one side. And let's go for yellow on that one there. Now these colors are completely irrelevant. It's just the colors that are on the bulb holder. And I'll hold the bulb in shot. So we'll go for this one first. Oh, look at that. That's going to upset the camera, isn't it? So we've definitely got current flow working on this side of the solenoid pack. Don't need that. That's the spare spare lead. Go away lead. Right, now on this side, this is the side that wasn't clicking anywhere near as strongly. Ah, we have no current flow. So, for example, if that was spool in, the winch would spool in without any problems. Assuming that those, that buzz bar doesn't have sufficient corrosion or poor contact to not carry the current to do that. But it's, it's lighting the bulb pretty bright, pretty bright, so we're pretty good there, I think. We will do a load test shortly. But on this side, well, the armature is not really moving very much, is it? We have a problem. So that's how you wire one of these up to test it. Pretty easy, really. Once you know what each of the colours do and where they should be connected. Now, if you don't have a bulb to hand, you can also use a multimeter. I'm just trying to get it in the shot there for you to use the same shot. There we go, look. And I'm going to wire up the two terminals just using some fly leads because it's a lot easier that way. Onto these two terminals. There we go. So green will stick onto the positive. That's that one. And we'll use a white cable. These are just some generic kind of fly leads that you can buy. Very, very useful in the workshop. Right, so the uh, the yellow is connected to negative, and uh, the blue terminal is connected to the positive of the multimeter, and those wires are not touching at the moment. <laughs> for, not for long, probably. Right. Okay, so again, just getting the multimeter. If we see a positive on there, then we know that this terminal here, the blue terminal, is positive when that one is actuated. Ah, it is. Wonderful. Now, if we go around to the other side, let's see if we get any kind of voltage coming out at all. No. Zero volts. Not even a residual voltage. Bugger all. Okay, right, let's do a, a load test now. And I'm going to use a battery to do that, because obviously the power supply that I've got won't provide sufficient current. We'll turn that off. We're going to wire it up with a battery go through the same process again and I'm going to use a battery load tester to apply a load across these two terminals to see if, it'll, if that buzz bar inside will actually carry a load uh, and provide sufficient current for the winch to work correctly. <clears throat> so it's exactly the same process for wiring up but you can see now we're using some pretty heavy cable to provide the, uh, the supply to the relay block, the solenoid pack, call it what you like. That's that one. Let's get the uh, let's get the earth ball. Now these are just some cables that I've had kicking around. That I'm just making use of. Come back. All oh, is forgiven. Is that going to fit? It is just. Jeez, we should have a washer on there, shouldn't we? Really? Let's go and get a washer. Stay. And you can use jump leads for this if you've got a decent set of jump leads. It shouldn't be a problem. Just be obviously cautious of the fact that. Jump leads sometimes can come off, and then it's going to cause you a bit of a problem. It's always good to do testing with a proper lead, and then you're eliminating points of poor contacts and such. Right, so that one needs to go onto the black terminal on here. There we go, look. Now, just bear in mind that that is now live. 
and we can, we can double check that just to prove it we can put that onto there and get our bulb there we go look so we've got power supply now going to the relay okay so now we need some fly leads now remember the central terminal i've sort of covered up a little bit maybe i should move that around a bit so we go doing that obviously be careful you don't want to touch this one because it will be a direct short and we've got heavy cables going on now so it'd be a lot of sparks which would be fun and entertaining for you guys but so that made me jump out of my skin as always right so this one here needs to be connected to negative the central one uh, as per the worn instructions it doesn't really matter as long as the others are the opposite voltage so we can stick that on there look so we've now got a negative supply there we need a positive supply here and you can go off the battery if you want it makes no difference you can go off here or you can go off the battery for your positive supply doesn't really matter so we can do that one off there if you want just to minimize the congestion up here okay so that's now gonna be our trigger there we go right so we'll just let that dangle down for a minute because we'll need that later on and onto these two terminals we need to put the load now the load isn't going to be the bulb anymore this doesn't draw sufficient current to replicate the motor so what we can do is we can use our ba the battery tester so i'll go and get that now this is a snap-on battery tester and it's not an electronic one it's the old school where inside here there's a coil of heavy wire which will glow red hot so you'll see that shortly hopefully so it doesn't matter which way around we connect these two it makes no difference at all and now you can see the problem with jump leads can't you because you know, the, the connection is not great to be perfectly honest we're going to make sure that, that doesn't short out it's pretty congested oh i think it might just be all right there it has got some insulation on it but only just a bit of cardboard well, bear with me people there we go look at this i'm just gonna stick that in there just to be sure we don't want any any sparks do we really okay now to make the load tester work we've got to press the button down so we'll do that and i'm going to energize this circuit so that should now put power to this heavy load just stick it on there there we are look so we should start to see that glow red hot if it'll carry the amps now the battery is fully charged the battery is quite capable of doing that i'm just feeling for any kind of heat i'm not feeling anything hmm okay I'm not impressed so just to check that our battery is up to the job we'll stick this straight on the battery and we'll do that load test as if we were testing the battery really get rid of that Okay, so we're directly on the battery. Battery is down, actually. We've got, uh, can you see that? We've got like 11 volts there. Yeah, that battery's dead. New battery required. Damn. Right, got a fully charged battery. Double checked again, all good. Cool, all that's working fine. Now, let's get our load tester on. And it's a bit awkward using these kind of things because there's not a lot of room on here. But we'll see we will see if it makes a few sparks what the hell okay so we've got on there zero volts if we energize that we should have a voltage we do just over 12 i'm going to click that on i can let go of that so i can monitor these i'm going to turn on the load button and turn it around we can see it drops down to just over nine volts Ooh, flick it around oh we've got some smoke <laughs> poor connection if you look inside there you should see that glowing red hot look at that okay i'll turn that off turn that off so we know full well that let's get rid of that for a second that this particular side of the relay solenoid pack is working just fine if it can energize that and heat that up to um you know glowing orange we know there's a hell of a lot of current going on 
ample for a winch motor on an ATV. Okay, we'll do exactly the same thing now and try it on the other side. Chances are it's not going to work. Well, we know it's not going to work because the bulb didn't even light up. So why on earth would it heat this up? So we're not even going to bother doing that. We know it's not going to work. So, essentially, geez, essentially only half of this solenoid pack is working correctly. The buzz bar feeding for, that's triggered by this trigger terminal here is working fine whereas the other buzz bar is not so now an interesting bit is we're going to dig our way in and take a look inside this solenoid pack to see what the problem is not too sure how far we're going to get but we'll have a look hey guys it's tall girl holly here now's the time to grab your anti mechanic mug you can find that on the zazzle website just up the top here once you do, you can take a selfie with it and send it to antimechanic at live.co.uk. That'll throw you in the drawer to win some really cool stuff, including forge gear, ting tools, and the anti-mechanic personalised jacket. Draw will be drawn on December 2020. Signing off, Tall Girl Holly. So, we've seen quite clearly that one side of the solenoid can carry the current needed to power the winch motor. We've seen the, the filament inside that battery tester glow red hot, uh, indicating plenty of current flow. So the buzz bar on that side is working correctly. But on the other side, on the terminal, just bend it back, the terminal with these green crusties here, look, that's the one that just goes a very gentle, kind of very quiet little click. Right, this one here is nice and crisp. We know that that one's working properly. The armature on this side isn't moving very well. And obviously it's not making contact because it won't even light a bulb, never mind power that filament in the battery tester. So the next stage now is to dig inside this solenoid and take a look to see what the problem is. Now, I, I'm not familiar with this. I haven't stripped one of these down before. I don't know how far we can get, but there are some screws on the back here and some here. So we'll get those removed first. I think this end cover will come off. And we'll see what we can see and we'll go as far as we can because this is scrap but it's always good to know how to test one of these because the problem might not be the solenoid it might be a poor connection somewhere it might be a switch that controls the solenoid you'll have to do more testing but this video is all about showing you how to test one of these solenoids and the same test would apply to pretty much most winch solenoids not just this worn what model is it it's the 89579 and this one is listed to fit the van the worn vantage 3000 stroke 4000 atv rov winches but they, they all work pretty much the same way once you know how to wire them up so you'll need to do some research or look, if you bought the winch new it should come with a wiring diagram in the owner's manual so you can reference that and then you can rig it up on the bench and do your own tests very simple and you don't need a multimeter you just need a bulb basically and a power supply we've already got a battery and a few wires and it could save you buying one of these fitting it and then not fixing the fault so essentially you've wasted a load of money okay let's take a look inside see what we find okay okay right hopefully you can see well yes it's pretty much in focus isn't it so we're going to whip these screws out They've got little sealing washers on there, so obviously they're, they want, they're trying to keep the moisture out. But I don't think they've done a very good job. And bearing in mind these machines, ATVs and ROVs, operate in very, very muddy, harsh conditions. It's absolutely essential that a solenoid pack can keep the moisture out. Right. Oh man. Wow. Oh, it stinks. It smells really caustic actually so we've got on here quite a build-up this this looks like it's being galvanized and there's quite a build-up of corrosion on top of that galve there's your so oh geez really really stinks these are your solenoid packs just in here look so you've got the well this is the coil of wire that gets energized now we know that that wire that winding isn't broken because it was making a clicking noise uh, on both of the two solenoids the problem i think is in here now is it going to let us go any further 
I don't know, maybe we've got to dig our way in and have a look. We've got a little rubber seal there, will that come off? Or has it been soldered in situ? It's been soldered in situ, hasn't it? And you can see here, this terminal, the brown terminal, is common to both of the windings. That's one end. This is one continuous length of wire, and one end is here, and the other end is here. And on this side, one end is here, and one end is there. So a very simple method of... Um... Ah, right, so that's the armature. This is the side that worked. So we can fire that up. Let me get some, uh, some cables. We can use our power supply for this again. Right, red and black's always good. Keep it simple. Otherwise I get told off for using the wrong cables. Right, so we said that the central one is common. That was negative, wasn't it? So we'll stick that on there. We'll turn the power supply on. Now, this one, this is the armature here, look. This one uh, worked. Yeah, look. See that? And this one, I just made a very light click. <laughs> it's not doing anything at all now, is it? So I wonder if we put that on there and give the little guy a helping hand. Oh man, that is C's solid. Okay, so I'll take those off. And let's see if we can give it a bit more of a tap. Just try and get it freed off. In fact, I'll get some spray. Hang on. Right, don't know how successful this is going to be. This may well actually come back to life because if the only problem is that that armature is seized due to corrosion in the solenoid part here, then the actual buzz bar contacts in here might be fine. So if we can get that freed off, we can retest it. Okay, we might need a little punch and a hammer. Right. Let's chuck it in the vise and give that uh, armature a little tap. Well, we've got nothing to lose, have we? So that's the faulty one. So you never quite know where these videos are going to go. You really do But well, this has got a nice carriage, a good frame to clamp onto. So we're not going to go mad. That should be enough. So that's the one that works. Let's stick a bit of, a bit of lube on that one as well while we're on. And that should stop it from seizing up later on. Right, this is the problem one. And it doesn't spring back. Right, I'm going to have a little bit of a play around, see if I can get that to free off and come back out and then work it free. See if we can get it fixed up. I don't know. Is it going to work or not? I really don't know at this point in time. Your guess is as good as mine. It's always fun trying to fix things, isn't it? I think we're getting there. So all, all I'm doing is I've got the punch and I'm just, just doing that. I'm relying on the, the impact, the shock to free off the corrosion and the little return spring to push it back up. But it has changed, put it to here now, it is actually, I can feel some movement on it. Some movement is good, it should get better. See, it should come all the way so it's flat. It's almost there. More. This spray is bloody good. What is it? It's uh, Forge Rustoff Turbo Power S409. Very impressed. Bit of a messy job, but if you're stuck out in the middle of the wilderness and you can't buy yourself, oh, look at that. If you can't buy yourself a nice new relay, this might just get you home. It's not quite returning as far as it should yet. But it's getting there. So I'm going to persevere with this. I'm quite impressed by how it's freed off. And what I was doing, I just give it a little tap on the side as well. And you see now it's almost, it's almost level. Ooh, we've got about a millimetre or so to go. In fact, it looked quite loose then. Unfortunately, it's not that well sealed, is it? If all that moisture's got in, causes corrosion, it's 
it's definitely getting in somewhere. So if you've got one of these, it might be a good idea to pull it apart and just spray some uh, some spray grease or some lubricant around this area to prevent this from happening. We find that it'll last a lot longer. And by the looks of it, they're about uh, about 60, 70 US dollars of these relay packs, these solenoids. So. Okay, let's see if we've got some kind of movement now. So we'll just reconnect this. Could be completely waste of time, but who knows? Right, so we'll just double check. We've got the one that works, which is the one nearest my thumb. Cool. Oh, look at that. Definitely got some movement there now. Can you see that? I think we should retest it. Let's do that. Let's do a retest. We can just use the bulb for now. So I can rig that up here, actually. Okay, so negative. There's our positive. Okay, so... Actually, we need to put a negative on there. Positive, battery positive on the red. On there. I don't want to stand it upright if I can help it. Okay, and we need, I can get them off the, off the power pack. So we need a positive, we'll use white for that. That's going to be our trigger. And another, another lead, hang on. There we go. And then we need battery negative on the brown. There it is. Okay, that should. Cool. And we just need Mr. Bulb on the output terminals, which would normally go to the motor. So we'll put one on there. And we'll use the yellow wire and one on there. Okay, so there's the bulb. Can you see the bulb? You can. Right, so now what we need to do is connect this to there. We know that that one's gonna work. That was the one that was working before. Is this gonna work? <gasps> We've fixed it. That's fantastic. Well, there's one more test to do, and that's to see if that's gonna carry some current. Right, I get the battery rigged up again. This is cool. I like fixing things. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, it doesn't matter which way around, so we'll stick that one on there. We'll stick that one. Jeez, it's crazy tight in there. Okay, just bringing it round without all touching. I think we're okay at that. Okay, so we're just going to energize the one that we know, uh, the one that we know didn't work, which is that one. We've got. Where are we now? We've got the 12 volts. Look, can you see that? There you go, you can now. So we've got the 12 volts again. Pressing the button. It's under load. Turning it round. Is it going to warm up? Is it going to carry the current? Oh yes, look at that. Bloody good. Right, so we'll turn that off before it all melts. Get rid of the tester. Well, great news, it actually works again. So if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere and you, your solenoid pack on your worn winch, and that's the 89579 model, and it has got, or I did have the model number on there, but it's rubbed off, unfortunately, from where it was being mounted on the vehicle. But if you've got one that looks like this and you're stuck somewhere, then you might just be able to get it going again because it might be, as in this case, the corrosion caused one of the armatures to stop moving, you know? And it's still not moving 100% on this one, but it does actually work. So I've got to work on that a bit more if I'm gonna fix it permanently. But we definitely saw it carry current on that side that was failed before. So where do we go from here? Would, I bet you'd like to see what's actually inside this part of the solenoid pack, the actual buzz bar. Now to do that, I'm gonna to have to destroy this solenoid, but for you, the viewers, so you get to you know understand exactly what's happening inside here. I'm quite happy to you know junk this and dig deeper. So I think the first step for me to do it's probably molded around certain components. So 
I think the first thing to do is to, to basically, I, I'm not bothered about desoldering, I'll just cut through the wires that connect these, uh, these solenoid packs. And then maybe, yeah, I think we might just, once we get the, uh, the seal out of the way, I might be able to uncrimp that end and actually remove each of these windings out of the way. And then maybe, just maybe, we can get a bit further in. I don't really want to cut the whole thing open because that's, you know, probably going to destroy what's on the, what's on the inside. But uh, we'll see how far we get. And I'm prepared to keep going with this video for as long as you're going to keep watching. So we'll crack on. Right, so we've got some more tools. And I think the first job is just to cut through. Now, it's, obviously, it's never going to work again now. I could desolder these, but this is going to be junk. So we're just going to cut through. One, never to work again. Two, three, four. Oh, after you've fixed it, Andy, you've just destroyed it. Right, I want to get rid of this rubber grommet. Now, obviously, the whole thing is sort of pressed together in the factory. But I think if we just... You see there, look, on there, it's sort of, there's some little inserts of this, this bracket here is sort of keyed in. Now, I know it's going to damage the winding, but I don't care anymore because we've already, oh, there we go, look. So maybe we can just get some pliers in there now. Just ease that off. Same on this side. Sorry, windings. You're gonna to have to die. That's one. It's, it's you know by doing this, I have definitely destroyed the windings. There's no no doubt about that. But we're not interested in that side of it anymore. Okay. So I think it's highly unlikely those windings have got con conductivity anymore. Continuity, but who knows? Maybe they have. Right. There's our little plunger that was seized before. So that one was the good one and the rusty one was the bad one. So now maybe we can push the, oh, there we are, look, right. So we can actually push that all the way through. It wouldn't go out the bottom end. It was nearly freed off, nearly. And it has like a little plate at the top for some strange reason. Don't know why. So we can get that one out. This is the good one. And again, that's got the little plate at the top but you can see there's a little bit of corrosion build up a bit of dirt on that armature and that's why it was binding okay i don't think they're going to come out of there too easily they're actually riveted over at this end here look so we're going to leave those alone but interesting to see even on the good one how we've got some corrosion build up on the inside there look this could be salt actually it could be salt water I wonder if they've been in the sea, because that would definitely cause this problem, without a doubt. Interesting. Oh, look, part number for the actual winding itself, 15-0007CX. Same for both sides. Cool. And you could actually test, test those for continuity. Let's do that, see if I've damaged them. Probably have, or at least joined a few of the turns together by damaging the insulation but you never know well that one's all right ha and that one's all right they sort, sort of survived for now okay sorry camera right so what have we got going on here well those are the bits that get pushed in by the armature you can see there look as it get, comes up it pushes pushes that in so you know if you got really 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 stuck out in the middle of nowhere you could actually if you took this bottom part off you could actually manually energize your winch by pressing that button pretty cool eh? so who needs a relay really who needs a solenoid pack now, i don't know if that's going to come off there or not no it's not so you can see the corrosion build up again but that one doesn't spring back in fact it's much harder to move so chances are there's probably some corrosion in there as well. So it wasn't just the armature. But we have proved we got it working good enough to actually power the winch. But I think the spring may be badly corroded in there. Now, 
what else can we take off? Well, we've got a sticker and get rid of that. And you can see the corrosion build up on there, can't you? Right, let's see if we can get rid of this, this seal. Okay, interesting. Now, I know it's junk. That's why I'm doing this. I wonder if we can maybe lever that off. Ooh, something gave. Don't break your screwdriver. I don't know. Bigger screwdriver. Let's knock it up a, a bit. Oh, that was good. Right, we've definitely broken something there. Okay, cool. Alright, see so if we can do the same on this side. It seems to be coming free now. now I, I'm only doing this to show you what's inside, obviously. Jeez. Well, we've cracked the casing. So maybe we need to exploit that a bit more. Wow, it's brittle, is that stuff? I just get the feeling if these weren't there, if we could get those off. And they're probably riveted to the casing, we'll see. Because it does turn. Nah, it must be riveted over the casing. Right. Interesting stuff though, isn't it, taking stuff apart? Well, we've definitely got some movement going on. So close. Hmm. Definitely isn't going to work now, is it? <laughs> right. I think we've got something collapsing now. You can see all this starting to break up. It's all cracking through. Things are starting to give up. One side better than the other, but it does, it really, really smells of sulfur in here. Don't know why. I can see some editing coming on shortly. I wonder if <laughs> we should have done this earlier on actually we should have taken all these bolts off and that might have actually helped a little bit let's do that you never know where's my spanner oh it does undo oh yes Things are starting to fall apart now. Whether that's actually going to be beneficial or not, I don't know, but we'll see. I love taking stuff apart. I'm pleased we fixed it before we destroyed, before we destroyed it. I think it's good for you to see what's actually inside one of these things, so you'll you get a better idea of what needs to be done to fix it. Yeah, I really think we should have undone those right at the start. That probably would have made it much easier to take apart. But hey, that's what these videos are all about, isn't it? It's about finding out. Maybe, just maybe, you could actually repair yours. 
Maybe that top cover would come off on its own. Right, what have we got? I think it would, actually. I really think it would. Okay, so we've got here, inside, we've got the two buzz bars. And you can see they are very, very badly corroded. Let's see if I can get the torch on there, look. Everything in there is pretty black. There's some green stuff, which indicates corrosion on the copper. In there, look, you see we've got some green corrosion there. We've got a return spring there. God knows what the other return spring. Oh, look at that, I was right. Okay, so the other return spring was on here, and it had corroded away, look. That's the remnants of it, just there, on the screwdriver. Are you on the camera? Where's the camera? Jeez, there we are, look. That's part of the spring. It should look like that, and that's just one of the coils. And there's a little bit more left. When did I see it? In there, look. There's another bit. That's all that's left of it. So it, this really was junk. There was no way it was going to last much longer, but we did actually prove we could get it working again short term. So these are the contacts here, look. And again, that's got a little spring between the two. And these are the actual contact points. These are the bits that get burnt by the current, when because they, they arc. Every time they make contact, they arc. And they have a finite life. You know, they, these things are consumable. And again, you've got some more contacts just in there. Look, one there. Now, this is deformed probably because for me attacking it. But uh, I think if you undo those nuts at the top, you probably get it a lot easier. I didn't think it would, would do that actually. I thought it was all sealed. Yeah, you can see that I've actually, I've actually bent that one compared to the other one. It's no longer a right angle, is it? So I've killed that bit as well. Okay, so we're going to take out the other buzz bar if we can, if it's going to let us. Probably not. Don't know. It may not disassemble anyway, to be honest. You can see that the whole thing is just full of corrosion. Yes, definitely needed to be changed regardless. But, oh, it's got some more screws. Wow. Okay, Let's see if we've got a screwdriver that's going to fit those. Just. So those screws go down to the plate. Right, so you can take the whole thing apart. Wow. There you go, you see. Wouldn't have known that. So those screws must have been, I think, underneath the sticker. Yes, this sticker here with the colour codes on. If you remove that, you'll see there's, that's where the screws are. Bloody good. Okay. So, oh, there's another another bit of our corroded spring look. So there's obviously been an awful lot of uh, water, or I believe salt water ingress, into this relay. Um, and all these little O-rings and stuff that Warren have put in this relay to try and keep the moisture out, they just haven't worked, have they? Because as you can see, there's lots and lots of moisture. And that one connects to this bar here. There we are, look. Is it going to come out? Maybe if I get the O-ring out of the way, it will. There we go, look. So again, it's bent because that was me. But you can, you can see the contact, the contact points on there, look. Yeah, they don't look too bad. I think the, the biggest problem was the corrosion. Well, it was that spring failure, to be fair. That was the issue. And again, we've got more. There's lots of contacts in it because it's, it's double acting contact. And we've got part of this is actually breaking our way here, look. Now, that might have been me and my screwdriver leaving my way in, but it doesn't look very healthy. But again, the con. I don't know about that, actually. The part of the contact has disappeared as well. So the corrosion has really eaten into that buzz bar. Well, that, it's not, that isn't the buzz bar, that's the actual contact terminal, isn't it? But yeah, what a mess. Jeez. Okay, well, we did it. We actually made it all the way in. That little spring's still working. But as you can look at the corrosion on there, look. Horrendous. Hmm. 
interesting stuff right well that's all for the bin well there you go a very different kind of video i never i had no idea where it was going to go um but we sort of we tested it showed you how to test the relay how to wire it up how to do a test using a bulb and then how to do a load test now just because it lights up a bulb doesn't necessarily mean that the contacts are going to carry the kind of current that you need to run a motor you know the, the, the symptom would be a slow running motor for example now this is only covering the solenoid we've not looked at you know failures of motors uh, bad connections points of high resistance due to corrosion uh, failure of the switch that triggers the trigger circuit on the solenoid there are many other possibilities as, as to why your winch doesn't work but what was really interesting in this video was the extent of the corrosion in that solenoid and uh, last night when i was looking around for the for the wiring diagram for this relay i, I did see a few comments of people that have had to buy replacement relays wondering why the relay has only lasted a short period of time well quite clearly that relay is not fully sealed against the elements if you're going to use the bike in the sea for example or a really harsh environment like on a farm then you're going to get ingress into the relay and it's going to cause corrosion and as you can see on here on those on those two windings on the bracket there was a lot of corrosion and we saw that all the way through the relay i mean obviously it's it's junk now but it was interesting to see what's actually on the inside uh, and how it's all constructed how it works how it's put together but even right in the heart of the relay on that middle plate again lots and lots of corrosion um, we also discovered because i'd never taken one of these apart that you can just disassemble the top half by removing the uh, the little colored sticker this bit, if you peel that back, obviously make a note of what terminal does what. Uh, and then you can remove those two little screws and all the brass nuts, which are on the, uh, the output studs. If you remove those nuts, then you should, in theory, very carefully, maybe pick out those little rings as well, be able to remove the whole top cover. Whether or not you'll get the whole thing back together or not is a different matter. Uh, there's lots of springs in there, you know, all the buzz bars and stuff. And chances are, you know, if you're seeing corrosion, what I would do is go in on this side first. And if you're seeing a ton of corrosion on that, then it's highly likely that there's also corrosion on the little buzz bars and the contact points. And as we saw with this particular relay, the weak point, the, the primary fail, as you may call it, was the return spring, the main spring. That's what it should look like. That was the side that was working. For the armature it was pushing the armature back to where it wanted the other armature there was basically no return spring it just corroded away uh, and if that's happened then you're gonna have to replace it you know this this spring feels quite weak as well um, you know so there you go if you enjoyed the video why not click on the subscribe button you'll see a little gear icon turn up click on the gear icon and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications our friends at YouTube or they'll send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. And there'll be more videos covering winch-related electrics in the future. I've got a Nissan Patrol with a nice big worn winch on that that needs to be overhauled. And I'll be digging into the relay pack on that one as well. I'll also be covering the switch gear, uh, you know, the, the spool-in, spool-out switch. And also, don't forget, if you're going to install a winch, I would strongly recommend that you fit a battery isolation switch. And that way, the whole winch system is de-energized. There's no power to it when you're not using it. And if something goes wrong in that solenoid pack and the winch just keeps running, you can just turn that switch and cut everything off. And that's going to prevent possible injury, fire, and whatever else. You know, it could actually lead to an accident. If the winch keeps spooling in, the vehicle keeps moving, it might pull the vehicle into a position that you really don't want it to be in. So battery isolation switch, not that I sell them, uh, they're not a sponsor, whoever may, hell, make a good one. Um, you know, really good idea to fit. Okay, crew, uh, what else? You'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. You can also email me, and my email address is in the video description. Uh, there's also a Patreon page. You can drop onto that to become a patron. And you can also go to, onto the Zazzle store. That's where you can get the Andy Mechanic merch. 
Uh, I haven't got any to hand to show you, but anyway, not to worry. Drop onto there, www.zazzle, Z-A-Z-Z-L-E dot co dot N-Z. Do a search, Andy Mechanic YouTube, one word. That'll take you straight through to the Andy Mechanic merch store. And you can get all sorts of stuff. Toolbox, stickers, mugs, you name it, it's on there. It's great fun. Uh, okay, crew, well, that's about it from me. Until next time, I'll see you around. Cheers. Over and out. Yeah. <laughs>